Okay, let's resume. So it's a pleasure to introduce the last speaker for this morning, uh, John Pardon from Princeton University. John is a rising star in symplectic geometry. Um, he's a clay fellow uh, among many other distinctions. I mean, the simplest thing to say is it used to be in symplectic geometry there were a lot of very hard problems that nobody knew how to solve. And now we have actually a meta strategy, which is basically get John interested in your problem. So with that said, uh, John's talk today will be about Liouville sectors and the local open closed map. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Thank you very much to the organizers for the invitation uh, to give this talk. Um, it's a pleasure to be here to um, the conference celebrating the Journal of Differential Geometry. Right. So. So to any symplectic manifold, um, we can associate this, its chi category. This is a, an interesting um, invariant which we'd like to understand. Um, so it, it's a category. Its, its objects are Lagrangians inside X. And Morphisms are, um, well, the Hom space between two Lagrangians, L1 and L2, is well, it's the, the free abelian group generated uh, by their intersection points uh, with, with a differential. And the differential counts. disks, which look like this. This is L1, this is L2. The existence of a holomorphic disk like this would tell you that this, the differential of this point is equal to this point, I mean, if there were no other disks. Right, so um, and there's an interesting algebraic invariant of this called um, Hochschild homology. Um, which I will just write down as a very explicitly as a, as a big chain complex, the sum over all p tuples of objects of tensor product of a morphism spaces. So morphism from L0 to L1, L1 to L2, LP minus 1 to LP, and then back around LP to L0. So um, this sort of algebraically, you can think of this as the universal recipient, or the recipient of the universal trace map. So if, say, for every Suppose you have a abelian group A, and you specify for every endomorphism of some object of your category um, an element of your abelian group A called its trace. And supposing this satisfies trace of AB equals trace of BA, this is induced by a unique map from HH0 of your category to the abelian group. At least that would be true if all of these morphism spaces were concentrated in degree zero. So more geometrically, um, you can uh, consider the following operation. So um, I'll introduce what's called the open closed map from, um, so this is a map from the, the Hochschild homology to, well, to the ordinary cohomology just of your manifold. And what does it do? It counts um, holomorphic disks. like this. So right, well, the generator of this complex is just a bunch of um, intersection points. L0, L1, LP. And you count disks like this. And you look at, well, roughly speaking, you look at the cycle in X 
swept out by all such holomorphic disks. So if you look at that cycle, swept out by all such holomorphic disks, it's a cycle in X, and, and by Poincaré duality, we'll, we'll view that as a, as a co-chain, co-cycle. So whether you can sweep out the fundamental class of X in this way, using Lagrangians, is a very important um, a property a symplectic manifold can have, so it has a name. So if, if this map hits the unit, which is just the, the fundamental class, of X, uh, then we say X is non-degenerate. So one of the things uh, I'll be talking about is, is work to show, um, it gives a framework for showing manifolds, symplectic manifolds are non-degenerate. Right, so, Okay, so for, for, first of all, let me say, say briefly why this is important. So, the result of Abu Zaid and Abu Zaid Fukaya o, o Taono, which says that um, in, in various settings, which I don't want to um, say explicitly right now, um, if, if this open closed map um, hits, right, so suppose we have restrict the open closed map to um, some, some subcategory. Um, if, if this hits the unit, um, then this, uh, this collection of objects B generate, split generates. Um, the Fukai category. Um, so that is, well, classing all, classifying all Lagrangians in a given symplectic manifold is almost always a an, an hopelessly impossible task, or at least that's what seems by current technology. Um, so if you wanted to approach the, the, you know, the problem of understanding the Fukai category by first understanding what all the Lagrangians are, um, that you, you, would, you, would, you would usually fail with that method. So, um, but, but what this result says is that if you can instead just find some collection of nice Lagrangians and you can show that, um, to calculate what this map is for those Lagrangians and show that it hits the unit, then actually those, those Lagrangians reflect the entire category. Of course, that's a far cry from showing that, saying that, you know, they represent all isotopy classes of Lagrangians. If, if you want to use the statement to then say something about actual Lagrangians, you have to work harder. Okay, so one more result to say why this is an, an important property. So, um, result of Shilkanatra is that um, for, for, for Liu of a manifold X, um, if, if X is non Generate, then this open closed map is an isomorphism. So as soon as it hits the hits the unit, it actually has to be the whole, an isomorphism. Oh, okay, so examples: um, cotangent bundles are non-degenerate. Result of Abu Zaid. And, and Riemann surfaces are also non-degenerate. Okay, so, so what I, I want to talk about is, I already said, it's a way of uh, showing that a given symplectic manifold is non-degenerate. And the way we want to show a manifold is non-degenerate is by making a local calculation. Now, now, it's not a priori clear why, why this should be true, because if you have some symplectic manifold X, and you have some Lagrangians, which are 
reasonably localized. Um, you don't have any, you, well, you have to establish some a priori control on the holomorphic disks because you could have a holomorphic disk which uh, sort of travels throughout your entire manifold. If you try to cut it along some, some hypersurface, um, then well, your holomorphic, you might be cut, cutting your holomorphic curve like this. So, so fortunately, there, there's, a, there's a wide class of examples where, where this doesn't happen. Um, and so you can, so that's, that's what I'll, I'll talk about. So, so first uh, definition, so a Lieville manifold is an exact symplectic manifold So exact just means we have a chosen primitive for the, for the symplectic form, um, which near infinity um, modeled on the symplectization of a, of a contact manifold. So that is, it's R times Y, um, and lambda is e to the S. Alpha S is the coordinate on R um, for contact manifold Y. So examples: any any cotangent bundle is a Lieber manifold. Also, any Stein manifold. of a manifold, and this, these are one of the examples uh, we'd like to uh, treat with, with this work. Okay, so, so here's a key definition. So okay, this is joint work with Shilka Natra and Vivek Shende. So, a Liouville sector um, is okay, to leave a manifold of boundary um, such that, all okay, right, so if, if we just wanted to um, talk about leave a manifold of boundary, uh, we'd run into this issue. Um, the, the boundary could have um, holomorphic curves sort of passing through it, which is, which is, is not good from the point of view of the type of argument we'd like to make. So. Uh, so we want to in introduce another notion, which is more restrictive. So a Lieber sector is a Lieber manifold of boundaries such that there exists a Hamiltonian vector field linear at infinity, uh, which is transverse to the boundary. Right, without loss of generality, let's say it's outward pointing along the boundary. Okay, so this condition tells you a lot about holomorphic curves passing through the boundary. In fact, it tells you that there can't be any holomorphic curves passing through the boundary. So let me try to say why that's true. So anytime you have a, a hypersurface in a symplectic manifold, it has a characteristic foliation. That is, the, the kernel of the symplectic form restricted to that hypersurface has a, has a one, well, is one-dimensional, um, and so it defines a foliation. Um, and okay, there are certain hypersurfaces which you can cut along called um, stable Hamiltonian ones. Um, and by work of Aliashberg, given Talhofer, when you cut along one of these hypersurfaces, the holomorphic curves concentrate along uh, closed orbits of the characteristic foliation. Right, so holomorphic curves. Along closed orbits. But on the other hand, um, this statement xi um, being transverse to the boundary, this is equivalent to saying that this function, the Hamiltonian function i, when you take its differential and restrict it to the characteristic foliation of the, 
the boundary. This is non-zero. Right, so if you have the closed orbit, you'd have a function on S1 with no critical points. No, not possible. Okay, so examples. So the cotangent bundle of um, of any manifold with boundary is a Liouville sector. And okay, any Riemann surface, let's see, let's be more precise, any punctured ordered Riemann surface um, with no boundary components homeomorphic to S1 is a Liouville sector. Right, so you can think of, of lots of these. This is a Liouville sector, for example. Okay, so I think as as Denis already said, when you have a non-compact symplectic manifold like a Liouville manifold, um, you have to be careful um, with the definition of the Fukai category, and well, we really want to consider the wrapped Fukai category. So the morphism spaces are not just generated by, by intersection points, but also by rabe chords um, at infinity. So, so every, and this definition extends to Liouville sectors. Wrapped Fukai category, and the, the point um, of, of this generalization is there's really one, one new, really only one new ingredient uh, from the case of Liouville manifolds, and that is um, to use this Hamiltonian vector field uh, to show that there are no that the, the holomorphic disks stay away from the boundary, um, and and also. Okay, every Liouville sector has um, um, a flavor of, of Hamiltonian floor homology called sympactic cohomology. Um, and it's, it's what replaces the cohomology of X when, when X is non-compact. And, and an open closed map. Do this in fact, the cohomology. Okay, so 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 this is nice, but but the real point is um, is that everything is functorial for inclusions. So an inclusion of Liouville sectors. Induces maps um, from the Rat Fukai category of the smaller one to the Rat Fukai category of the bigger one, and the same thing for symplectic cohomology. Right, um, so I made a, a notational error here. When you have this boundary, there, there are two boundary conditions you can put, and, and so. The group we want to consider really should not be called symplectic cohomology, but really symplectic cohomology rel the boundary. So we're going to talk about these groups. Okay, so so this allows you by, I mean, when, once this is set up, you have essentially a, the following formal consequence. So if a Levo manifold. X has a homology hypercover um, 
by Liouville sectors. I call them X alpha. Then, um, and, and the open closed map for each X alpha is an isomorphism. The open closed map. Well, let me just write open closed sub alpha. It's an isomorphism for all alpha. So then, then X is not degenerate. And, and, and hence, by, by Scheele's result, um, the open closed map is also an isomorphism for X. Great, so, so let me just give, okay, so, so okay, for example, if you have any cotangent bundle, you can cover it, you can, it has a homology hyper covered by cotangent bundles of balls, so, so correlate, and okay, you, you can, these small Liouville sectors, like a cotangent bundle of a ball, is small enough that you can just calculate this map explicitly. Um, all the holomorphic disks are, are easy to understand, or the relevant ones are. Um, and so this local to global principle tells you that any cotangent bundle is non-degenerate. So this recovers this result. And similarly, you can um, recover the result about Riemann surfaces. Okay, but there, there are other interesting examples, which I'd like to get to also. Okay, so let me just talk about a um, uh, very, very simple example. Okay, if, if you have the Liouville sector um, R cross zero one, it's just a strip. What is the Foucault category? Well, there's a single Lagrangian you might care about. This fiber, the morphism space from it to itself is just the integers because when you wrap it, there's only one only one intersection point. The syntactic cohomology is equal to the usual cohomology. So I guess I didn't say, but the syntactic cohomology um, of a non compact manifold is equal to, well, the usual cohomology plus some contribution of the ray orbits near infinity. Uh, but this guy doesn't have any ray orbits near infinity. So it's just the usual guy. So this is Z. And if we wanted to be really careful about gradings, it's z in degree one. Um, so now we have a map from the Hochschild homology of this category, which is just, this is just z. And it's also z in degree one. Mapping to symplectic cohomology. Okay, and, and, and one can check that this is an isomorphism. The, the, the reason is that the, well, we, oh, maybe, maybe I won't say why it's an isomorphism. But. Okay, so a corollary, okay, which is, is that uh, T star of S1 is not degenerate. Okay, now, now you might be, slightly worried about um, this because the elements we're hitting by the open closed map here have degree one, um, but the, the unit lies in degree zero. Um, so, so somehow the, 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 the element that we get, this, if it hits the unit, is not these elements which, uh, which we produce, it's not this sort of trace of the identity um, which, which hits this element. So what is it? Well, it's, it's composed instead of the, of the homotopies between these, these various elements. So if you have two nearby fibers, this guy, this guy, each one has their identity morphism. 
And, and if you sort of regard these guys as lying in a, a slightly bigger Liouville sector, which contains both of them, these are isomorphic objects. And the way to see that is, well, there's, there's this morphism, I called it uh, x, and there's a morphism the other way, call it y. So, so really what we want to do is consider the Hochschild chain x tensor y. And what this is, is it's, okay, it's not a, it's not a cycle, um, but it's differential is, well, it's xy plus yx. So this is the identity A plus the identity B. Maybe I'll write minus. And now you see if, if, you, if you add, if you go sort of go all the way around S1 and add up these elements, um, all the terms cancel for all the, all the fibers. Um, and you get a cycle. And that's the cycle which hits the unit. In, okay, so so the, the case of more, more general cotangent bundles is just a, a generalization of this. Okay, and you can see geometrically that this should hit the unit, because if you look at all the, all the disks um, that you're counting via this open closed map, well, they, they just cover all of, all of the whole cotangent bundle with degree one. Okay, so what about, what about Riemann surfaces? So every, punctured Riemann surface um, is a thickening of a ribbon graph. So it looks something like this. So, okay, there's a danger of, of, of misunderstanding these pictures. So, so, so this is a symplectic manifold without boundary. I, due to the way I'm drawing it, I have these dotted lines, but the, you attach ends to these. So, so holomorphically, um, you attach, so this dotted line so it closes up and you attach a punctured disk there. Um, so it's, it's non-compact without boundary. Okay, and if you have one of these guys, um, you can cover it with Liouville sectors. So here is one such Liouville sector. So it has a boundary and it goes off to infinity in three directions. This, this is just um, D2 minus three points. Oh, and, and, and the rest you cover easily with, with strips. Okay, so you can also check that this guy is, is not the um, open closed map for this D3, D2 minus three points is also an isomorphism, so, so Riemann surfaces are not degenerate. Um, this is already well known. Okay, now what about higher dimensions? So, how, I mean, Fleur theory in, in, um, in higher, in higher dimensions is, yeah. is rather more interesting and non-trivial. Right, so let's consider um, a Stein manifold. So that's, it's a complex manifold which embeds in CN, and V is a, an exhausting Clary subharmonic function. When you have the setup, you can consider um, the union of all the stable manifolds inside V. So L is a singular Lagrangian spine 
for V. Okay, why is it Lagrangian? Just to be, to be brief, um, the gradient vector field, okay, so this, okay, it's so a stable manifold of, of the gradient of phi. I should say. The gradient of phi is the Liouville vector field here. So the Liouville vector field expands the symplectic form, but it also contracts L, if you think about what happens near or the stable manifold near a critical point. So, so if, right, the only form which can both expand and contract is zero. So that's why L is Lagrangian. Um, and, and it's a spine for V. That is, V deformation retracts down to a small neighborhood of L. So it's exactly a picture we had here. If you have a, a Riemann surface, it's this deformation retracts to a small regular neighborhood of, of a ribbon graph L. Oh, okay, now, now in general, L, L can be highly singular. However, um, there is a, a proposed class of singularities for which, um, for which it should be the case that you can always perturb L so that the singularities become of, of this following nice form. So Nadler introduces so-called arboreal singularities indexed by rooted trees T. So, um, so let's look at what they are in two dimensions. So this is um, a single vertex tree, corresponds to something non-singular in for this tree with two vertices. this space, um, one plane with another intersecting it transversely. For this tree, it looks like this. Um, let's see, I think this is for this being the root. Yeah, if, if the other one were the root, then it would look like this. Just have something like that. <clears throat> okay, so this is in, in uh, I mean, right, so this is for, I, I drew Lagrangian spines of dimension two, so Stein manifolds of real dimension four would conjecturally be described by um, by Lagrangian spines with this sort of singularities. Conjecturally can be described by, by Lagrangian spines with these sorts of singularities. So to any, um, to any <coughs> Lagrangian singularity, um, so what, what do I mean by that? I just mean a conical Lagrangian <coughs> in, um, in, in R2n. So looking, it looks something like this. Oh, hi, we can associate a Liouville sector, namely it's this Liouville sector. And one way of thinking about this Liouville sector is that you get it um, by removing from, from R2n a neighborhood of infinity of um, the Lagrangian. Okay, that's what we removed here. So, so I'll write
write this as a proposition, but it's, it's sort of still somewhat in progress. Um, the Rat Fukai category of the Liouville sector. So this is the Liouville sector associated to LT. Is this, these arboreal singularities. I'll call them LT. So this is just the category of, of representations of T considered as a quiver. All edges oriented towards the root. Oh, so this is some sort of explicit, um, explicit calculation. The point really is to give a new um, description of these arb arbor of these Liouville sectors. So, so X T can be described as as a Lefschetz vibration over the disk, whose fiber is a plumbing of of copies of T star S n minus one, indexed by um, it's, it's plumbed according to, according to the tree T and um, with vanishing cycles corresponding to the zero sections are arranged in an appropriate order. And from that description, it's, it's not difficult to check this. Okay, so, and then uh, using this, these categories, it's, it's easy to calculate what their Hochschild homology is. So, Oh, maybe I should be a little bit more precise. There's certain, um, there's certain obvious Lagrangians that we should care about. For instance, in this Liouville sector, um, we care about the fibers, or what I'll call the fibers. So they, they would be the fibers of sort of the canonical projection from the Liouville sector down to the spine L. And it's those Lagrangians that we calculate. So we just ca calculate these, these fibers, um, what their morphism spaces are. Okay, so if we stick we stick to this um, this, um, this subcategory, then um, then we get an isomorphism with symplectic cohomology, and symplectic cohomology is is the same as um, usual cohomology. This description I gave in terms of Lefschetz vibration shows that there are no ray orbits. Okay, so corollary if if v um, has an arboreal spine L, then um, V is not degenerate. Okay, so I have a little bit of time left, and so I'd like to sketch uh, what is um, a little bit more which is, I guess, less, less definite at the, at the moment. Uh, we, we have a plausible outline for how to prove what I'm about to say, but it's uh, not, not written down completely. So, okay, know, knowing, that, knowing that this category is, is non-degenerate, or these symplectic manifolds is, are non-degenerate is nice, but we'd, we'd really like to have an even more explicit description of the Fukai category. So, so here's, um, so there's this proposal of Konsevich for how this, how this should go. And this is what we'd like to, we'd like to prove. So, so let me just um, say what it is in this, in this case. Okay, so, so here's L, and here's the symplectic manifold V, outward pointing V of a vector field. Okay, now to any open set um, of L, we can associate um, sort of the fibers over that open set. Or maybe if this was the open set, we associate this Liouville sector. So, um, so, to, so to U inside L, we associate um, X U inside X. So it's called the whole symplectic manifold X. And it's simply the inverse image of this natural projection from X onto L. So, so from what I said over there, um, 
right? The inclusion of Liouville sectors induces a funk drawn for chi categories. So U maps to the Rapf chi category of XU is a, well, I'll use some fancy word, it's a preco sheaf of A infinity categories. So that is, um, that, that, that's not saying anything, anything new. I'm just saying that for inclusion of open sets, you have an inclusion functor from the Rapf chi categories. So this is in progress is that this, this is in fact, again, restricting to the fibers, is um, a co-sheaf. of A infinity categories. That is to say, if, if you know what it is locally, which, which we do, then, um, then you can recover it globally. So let me say very briefly how one, how one might, um, how we'd like to prove this statement. So let me draw yet again the picture. So I want to consider the following Lagrangians. So, so there are fibers, um, but, but I'm going to draw them in a specific way because I want to consider a very specific infinitesimally wrapped for category. So, so these are just the fibers of the various Liouville sectors in question. Um, and now, but, but I want to add the Grangians in between, looking like this. So, so call this category. So this is some infinitesimally wrapped chi category. So call the decimal call the infinitesimal, infinitesimal chi category on these Lagrangians. G. So G stands for Grotendieck construction. So, so by definition, okay, so, yeah, essentially by definition, um, by definition of, of the homotopy co-limit of, of A infinity categories, concretely what do we have to show? We, we want to show that this map from G to the wrap chi category. Uh, okay, before I say what we want to show, let me see what we have. So, so there's obviously an inclusion functor from this infinitesimal wrap chi category to the full wrap chi category just by wrapping the Lagrangians. Now this functor has the following property. There, there are these local morphisms. So there's a morphism, see if we're wrapping this way, there's a morphism from yellow to blue, but not the other way around. And this morphism, so I'll call this sort of an adjacent morphism. And the adjacent morphisms always go yellow to blue in this picture. Um, and all of them become isomorphisms in the Rat Vakai category. They're not isomorphisms in this one um, because they're no morphisms in the other direction. So we can invert them and, and we still get, get a functor. They localize the Grotten deconstruction. And by definition of, I mean, if, if you unwrap what the statement is actually saying, um, we want to show that this um, is fully faithful. And, and basically the point is to show that any fiber, um, any one of these guys, can be, can be wrapped algebraically working entirely in this category. So um, I guess I should have it on the board. So 
point is that that the fibers can be wrapped algebraically. in this localized category. For example, um, how do I want to drive this? So suppose we have this fiber. Um, well, if we're working in this category, what I can do um, is, well, okay, I, I claim that this is equivalent in this localized category to a cone of objects which looks like this. That's simple, um, where the morphisms, uh, well, they go. The differential um, in this twisted complex goes from, from yellow to, to blue. And the point is, right, that you know, each, each of these cones um, of these two guys are, are um, vanish in, in this quotient. So you just get the yellow guy back. And if you look at what this is, um, this is exactly a sort of wrapping of, of, um, of the fiber. Um, so that's sort of the underlying geometric fact, which, which we believe can be used to, to show this result. So thank you very much. Every Stein manifold is conjectured to have an arboreal spine. Um, and I, as, as far as I understand, there's, this is, you know, there's, there's work in progress showing this, but it, I, I don't know. It should, it should be true in any dimension that every Stein manifold has an, has an arboreal spine um, conjectured. I mean, I think in dimension four, it's probably there's, there's sort of only, only one bad singularity to, to talk about, so it's, it'll be easier there. But. Um, so I'm assuming that this is going to give eventually a proof that Nadler's proposal for micro-local sheaves is the same as the usual part category. Yes. Yes, um, right, so, so to show that, what would one have to do? Um, so this is somehow, if you look at sort of the, what this co-sheaf does on, on small open sets, what that defines for you is somehow a local system of categories on, on the space. Um, and sort of a priori, this local system of categories is very hard to classify in terms of its stocks, but luckily these categories are are sort of are rather nice. The automorphism group is, is very small. I mean, it's just, um, I mean, if, if you fix the objects and you fix the, it's just sort of what you do the objects and what you do the morphisms, that, that's all. There's no, no higher coherences. Um, so that means you can classify um, this local system of categories in terms of sort of simple data. And that is, yeah. Okay, if there's no further questions, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.